Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gosey for Hot and Cold. This week, we are looking at heat pump water heaters. Maybe you want to call it a heat pump boiler. It's a heat pump that extracts energy from outside and makes hot water, in this case, hot antifreeze, for space heating. Very simple device. Well, not a real simple device, but simple for you to install yourself. We've done this one here, and this is the actual unit. This is running right now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's very quiet, it's whisper quiet. Um, this is the outdoor unit. And what is unique about this is it's extracting energy from the air and it's heating fluid, in this case antifreeze, because we want to have it antifreeze for when it is really cold out. The unit is self-contained. There is no refrigerant plumbing. So there's no specialized skill involved other than plumbing with PEX tubing and filling the system with antifreeze, which is very simple. We set this up for do-it-yourselfers all the time. What I like about the whole concept is all the refrigeration work is in the unit. It's kind of like when you buy a refrigerator or a window air conditioner. You plug it in and it works. Same deal here. Nothing special, nothing to deal with in terms of refrigerant leaks. Somebody goofed, somebody didn't flare a fitting right, somebody didn't have the right thing that all goes away. And the efficiency is the same as a mini split. So this functions just like a mini split. It is a mini split except the split part is connected with antifreeze and PEX tubing as opposed to refrigerant piping and expensive stuff. And there's more you say Tom. <laughs> yes there is. This unit delivers about 34,000 BTUs of space heat so it's several times more capacity than a regular uh, mini split heat pump. Operates to 10 below zero. We've run them below that. Uh, the efficiency tends to drop off as it gets colder, as it does with any heat pump. But again, very comparable to a mini split. And it's a do it yourself project. Come around, let's come around to this side, take a quick peek. You can see, you may be able to see. The fan is running. It's blowing cooled air out. It's kind of warm out today. It's about 60 degrees. It's pulling air through the fan coil, and that fan coil is extracting the energy through the heat pump, which the uh, compressor and everything's in here, and the air that comes out is chilled because it's doing space heating. Two plumbing connections here. This is the inlet, and this is the outlet. There's two wiring connections here. One is for the power and one is for uh, controls. Very simple. Um, we actually put this system in last winter and it ran for heating part of the, what is a very big warehouse operation. It's up off the ground two feet. This is old Unistrut that was kicking around here so we're not in the snow and we don't have to worry about that. Again, physically separate, we have two units here. This is a very big warehouse, about a 10,000 square foot warehouse, and we're heating different units with different heat pumps. And we'll show you the inside setup in a minute. As you can see, we have two units here. So with these two units, we would have about 68,000 BTUs an hour. And let's go down here because again, this is the big building. Take a look down here. So here we have four units for what is the big part of the warehouse that we're putting in. And you can see the connections here. We have the inlet and outlet. We're hooking on the PEX tubing. Very simple plumbing. The wiring's already done here. 
there's uh, they call it the exhaust port. It's basically just a vent that we uh, we vent the system, get all the air out of it. And in this case, we have a new Unistrut rack as opposed to what I just showed you. But you can see again, we're off the ground, and this is for a, a very, we'll, we'll do a shot of the building in a minute just so you get an idea of the scale. It's a huge building. And we'll be feeding different, actually all four of these units are tying in together, all in parallel, and they'll step fire. So when it's really warm out, maybe one unit's running, but when it's the dead of winter, maybe two, three, or four units are running to heat this space. This, was, this building was originally heated with a big oil system. It was very inefficient, wasn't set up very well. Uh, we're going to change all that, and I didn't say this before, but these are reversible, so we can do air conditioning as well. And you say, well, gee, Tom, how do we do air conditioning? Well, we have to go inside for that. Okay, so now we're inside, and we're looking at the inside unit. Now, we don't have to use this particular unit. This is a fan convector. Basically, it's a coil with a blower, and this is on high right now. It's space heating. It's fairly quiet. You can uh, turn it down lower. If I remember how to do it, let's hit the right button. There we go. And uh, this is taking hot fluid. This was for the first unit we showed you, the single unit. This is feeding into the unit. And it's a very simple plumbing hookup. We have two pipes up the ceiling there going out to the heat pump, circulator pump, an expansion tank with an air, air removal device, a second circulator that's feeding two convectors. We have one out here which is a fairly sizable workshop. This does not have to be heated to 70 degrees. It's, it's so big that it probably should have an extra uh, heating unit, but this does a pretty good job of keeping this room comfortable for people who are working in here as a woodworker. So the, uh, this particular unit running in the winter, which it has run through one winter now, does a good job of keeping this space comfortable. Um, and then there's another, on the other side of this wall is an office space with a small unit. We'll show that in a second. Um, same kind of deal. That will heat up to whatever we want it to, to 70, 80 degrees if you want it that hot. We don't need it that hot, it, but it's, uh, it's there if we need it. Um, Plumbing can get as simple or as elaborate as we want it to. We've worked out some systems for do-it-yourselfers that are very simple. This is slightly more elaborate in that we have what's known, I call a charging assembly. It's all done in PEX, all simple. Um, with the charging assembly, we have two hose connections and a shutoff valve. And the flow is going this way. We're going to uh, hook up a pump here. We're going to shut this valve. We're going to pump in and push fluid through the whole system, displace the air, and return out through here and purge out all the air from the system. Very simple system, very easy to do, and the lights have come on. Um, once all the air is removed from the system, we close both valves and we open this valve and we're ready to go. We maintain a certain amount of pressure in the system. In this case, we've got about 26 PSI. You can see it's wobbling a little bit because the circulator is running pretty much it. Again, a very simple system. It's antifreeze because the system outside has to be freeze safe. Uh, and antifreezing the system is fairly easy to do. And as I say, we've got systems we've put together that make it extraordinarily simple for you if you were do-it-yourself to do this, even without a charging assembly. So we can do it with or without a charging assembly, with or without charging pumps. There's a lot of variations on the theme as there are with any heating system. Let's take a look at the inside unit. And this is the inside, or small unit, excuse me, for inside the office space, which is about uh, 150 square feet. It's not a big space, but again, this space will heat easily with this small unit. Uh, and um, these units have, have screens built in that you can uh, uh, clean maybe once a month. And uh, again, very quiet, very unobtrusive. If you're used to being in a kitchen with a kick space heater running, this is similar to that, except it's bigger heating capacity and it's whisper quiet compared to a kick space heater. So that's the inside part. I guess we, we probably have one out here. We could show you the innards. You, you got to see the inside. 
So here's a unit that's be in the process of being installed. You can look in here, you can see a very substantial fan coil. And that's the secret to what makes this work very well. It's a very big surface area. The fan is blowing air over it and it's uh, either putting heat or extracting heat depending on what you're trying to accomplish, what time of year it is. Um, the plumbing connections are on this end, the wiring connections are on this end, and uh, the real interesting and cool part about these convectors is they are reversible. So in the winter time, you're space heating, you're running heated fluid through this, it's heating the room, the fan is blowing air over it. In the summertime, if you want to condition the air or drive the space out, the unit reverses, the heat pump reverses, and runs chilled fluid through this fan coil. Now, in doing that, it chills the space down because now you're, you're putting out cool air, but it also condenses moisture out of the air. And these units have a condensate tray underneath them that catch any condensation, and the condensation can be run out to a floor drain or out the wall, depending on where we are and uh, that makes it function very much like a mini split. So you've got what essentially is a mini split unit. You've got an outside unit and an inside unit connected with PEX tubing and plumbed with antifreeze. And this is a do-it-yourself thing. Like I say, no specialized skills involved in doing that. And it's reversible. So we can heat or cool and we can dehumidify in the summer as well. And uh, the other aspect of this is you can have as many inside units as the system can handle. So there could be multiple inside units and there's no compromise in terms of the efficiency of the unit the way there is with a multi-port or multi-outlet mini-split. If you have a mini-split system with a lot of inside units, you tend to start to compromise efficiency. That doesn't happen here because we have a separate pump circulating the uh, heated antifreeze or the cooled antifreeze for whatever application we're going for. So it makes a big difference. Anyway, enough on this. We'll have more videos on how these things hook up and all the other components that go with this because there's a lot of variations on the theme. These integrate well with alternative energy systems. So stay tuned, we'll have more. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.